Philippians chapter 2, and I believe is uh, verse, yeah. Yeah, let's go to verse 14. No, verse 12. No, verse 13. I'm sorry. Verse 13. Let's go to verse 13. Philippians. 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 Oh, God, here it is. Philippians. Amen. I love you, Lord. Uh, yes, Philippians. Thank you, Father. So in the book of Philippians, in the Bible, chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, praise God. Uh, here we are. I'm almost there. So Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. Amen. Since, just bear with me. I'm sorry. Philippians 2, 13. Okay. In the New Living Translation, it says, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what please Him. Praise the Lord. Amen. So in other words, He told us to work out, work out, work out. You hear that? Work out what God has worked in. God has put something in you. Now it is your job to develop what he has put inside of us. And I love this because, you know, Paul conveyed this to the readers. Praise the Lord. And, and what he's showing us that Christian must practice this discipline. Praise the Lord. It's like a discipline. Working out, you know. Bringing out what he's put inside of us. Praise the Lord. It's a, we can call it a Christ exercise, praise the Lord, when, when you obey your Father, amen, and, and, and you obey that call to discipleship, praise God. And it's not easy, it's costly, you know, but those that are truly, truly interested in having it can have it, praise God. In fact, let me, let me do this. Let's go to Luke chapter 9, please. Luke chapter 9. Yeah, go there first. Luke 9. The Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 9. Chapter 9. And I know it's in... Ah, there it is. Now, verse 23. Luke 9, 23. You're going to enjoy this. And I'm going to read out the New Living Translation. And I enjoyed this translation. What I'm reading, I mean, the King James, obviously, you know, it expands it and it takes it to another level. But the New Living Translation, these verses just simplifies them, you know. And you get to understand, well, what does this really mean? So and then he says in verse 23, Then he said to the crowd, I guess it's Jesus, because the rest, it turns into red. And he quotes, If any of you want to be my follower, you must give up your own way, comma. Okay. Take up your cross daily and follow me. So what's more important? What you're facing, the problems, the circumstances, or that wonderful Father that you cannot see, but He's there. But we have His Word to, uh, to help us and guide us and lead us. And we have His primar our primary mentor here on earth, which is the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Amen? And then going back to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14, there are some things He asks us not to do because it will slow us down from this position. Praise the Lord. Get into this place that he wants us to be. Amen? All right. What, he, what I said before, we need to practice it, right? And it's like a Christ exercise to obey the Father and the call of discipleship. All right, so let's go back to Philippians, please. Philippians chapter 2, verse 14. 
The first thing he says is, and I'm reading out of New Living Translation, he says, do everything without complaining. Wow, we can stop right now. Do everything without complaining and arguing. Complaining in the Greek, the word complaining in the Greek means muttering, grumbling. Stop muttering. Stop grumbling. Look at the positive side of things, not the negative. To put on your shoes, you have to complain. It's not my fault you can't bend over and tie your shoelaces. Come on, family. For everything, we complain. He tells us, stop doing that. Do everything without complaining. And then he goes on in verse 15, please. So that no one can criticize you. Because the first thing they say, (laughs) right, that's a Christian. Did you hear what she said? Did you hear what he said? Because that justifies them to feel better about themselves. So that no one can criticize you, live clean, comma, innocent lives as children of God, shining like the bright light in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Praise the Lord. So be right. Be right. Do right. If you be right, you do right, you'll live right. Praise the Lord. You'll get to that place where you need to be. Remember what he told us. He wants to put us in a place of overflow. I need you to write that down. Because I want you to be able to see this word all during this year. Overflow. But for you to be able to see overflow, once again, this is an exercise that you're going to have to practice. Many of us are good at starting exercise, but we don't complete it. We leave it halfway. We won't... We'll show up in the gym maybe once in the blue moon because I'm too busy. I'm too. You, no one has time to do anything. You have to make time. The proof of desire is pursue. If you want something, you'll pursue it. If you want to become a great believer, a great disciple, a great learner, a great student, if you want to study the way, you're going to have to do some things that are inconvenient sometimes. Okay, so, um, and that's funny because he said to me that muttering, grumbling, complaining is an inner rebellion that defiles God to his face and it disputes his right to rule me. I don't feel like doing that. I'm going to do it when I feel, when I want to do it. Somebody understand what the Lord's saying to you, the Spirit of God. So we got to get rid of this complaining and this muttering, this grumbling. It's an inner rebellious. It's an inner rebellious. It's an inner rebellious that defiled God to his face and disputes his rights to rule us. Isn't he our father? Isn't he our God? And why are we going to become rebellious against him? Go to Romans chapter 14, please. Verse 1. In Romans 14, 1, we're going to read a little more to understand this matter. 14, 1. 14, 1 says, when you're there, just give me an amen. All right. Expect other believers who are weak in faith and don't argue with them about what they think is right or wrong. You better get this one down. Because we have this tendency, we like to be lawyers. You should have been a lawyer. Instead of what you're doing now. You would have made made money off of it. I remember when growing up as a kid, my father, after he used to straighten me out, you know what he used to say? You should... 
Become a boxer. At least you'll get paid for it. Because Pastor was always in a mess. <laughs> Amen? Become a boxer. At least you'll get paid for it. You're always fighting. So some of you should have become lawyers. Because <laughs> you're always arguing. Help the believer that is weak in the faith. And don't argue with them about what they think is right or wrong. Praise the Lord. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 now. 1 Corinthians 10.10. 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. And there it is. Remember we talked about the word grumbling? It's complaining. Well, here I'm reading out of a New Living Translation. I know you're reading out of the King James. But I'm doing it so that we can expand our mind. Is that okay, folks? The more, whatever, we, whatever tool we can use to help us get this bigger. Let's enlarge this. Let's enlarge it. Praise the Lord. So in verse 10, it says, Don't grumble as some of them did. Mm. And, then were, and then they were destroyed. Uh, those that came out of, out of Egypt, the Israelites, they grumbled. Guess what? Some of them didn't make it. He says, don't be like your ancestors and then was destroyed by the angel of death. Mm. So when we grumble, you know what we do? We're doing, we're opening a door to the angel of death to come and tear us up. Don't, don't open the door to that thing. Amen? What is grumbling? An inner rebellion. Inner rebellion that defiles God and his face. And disputes his right to rule us. I got one more scripture, please. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 4, and it's verse 5. 1 Peter 4 5. In 1 Peter 4 5. 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 5. But remember that they will have to face God, comma, who stands ready to judge everyone. Both the living and the dead. Let's say this with me, please. My name is Les, and I'm definitely not in your mess. <laughs> Complaining, man, not good. It's not a good thing. Not a good thing, family. Not a good thing. Okay, let's go back to sec let's go back to Philippians chapter two, verse fifteen, please. <clears throat> so that's Philippians chapter two, verse fifteen. So he says, so that no one can criticize you, live clean. Remember, you are on top of a soapbox every day. Everybody's watching us. What we say, what we do, oh man. Sometimes we forget that we have an audience. Let me, let me say that again. Leaders, and that is, say, point to yourself, say, that's me, I'm a leader. They're always watching you. Because you're a leader. They're always watching you. Okay? So he says, be blameless. Be blameless. Write it down if you take a note. Be blameless. That's living clean. Above reproach. Be harmless. Don't go around doing harm. In other words, be pure. Be genuine. Be genuine in the faith. And stop being crooked. And that word crooked in the Greek, you're going to have to help me out. 
Uh, it's a Greek word, and it comes from the Greek. When the spine is crooked, they call it skull. That's what that word means, what Harry said. <laughs> Scoliosis. That's what that word crooked means in the Greek. Stop being crooked. Instead of the spine being straight, it's got scoliosis, it's crooked. Don't be crooked. Don't be perverse. That's what Paul was telling the Philippians. But guess what? The word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That's what the Holy Spirit is telling us right now. Stop being crooked. Get it right now. Get straight. What's that? Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. God bless Harry. Oh boy. So uh, a, a, a spine that is crooked is no good for nobody. Come on now. Amen. So that's what he's saying to, to them. Don't, don't walk around with a crooked spine. Praise the Lord. Okay? Be right. In other words, what he said, and then he goes in 16. We've got to go to 16. Philippians 16, he says, Hold firmly, that's the New Living Translation, to the word of the life, to the word of life. Then on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain and that my work was not useless. My God, I, I love it. See, I, you don't want your work and you don't want your life to be useless. I'll say that again. You don't want your life to be useless. So you want to be, you want to present yourself as a correct role model of Christ. As a believer, as a follower. Okay? Not walking around an eagle. With an eagle. And you know what eagle means, right? Edge God out. That's what eagle means. But as selflessness, like Jesus did. Jesus walked around selflessness. Not selfish. Selflessness. It was about the other person, not about him. Looking after always someone else. And that's why he went through suffering. And that word suffering in the Greek means, Daniel, discipline. He had to practice. He had to train. He went through discipline. Praise the Lord. And all of us are going to have to do that. You're going to have to, It's costly. It's not convenience to, to serve the Lord. It's inconvenience. But the but the return that you get, the dividends, my God, you can live off the interest and, and not worry about anything else. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. And that's what we need to do. We need to live right. You know, do right. Let's do, let's do this right. Praise the Lord. You know what? Let's go to, let me see something. I can do something. Go, go to Philippians chapter 3. And I think it's around 16, probably 15, 16, 17. Let me go there. Philippians, the next chapter, very simple. Philippians chapter 3, I got it. Verse 17. Verse 17, right here. Verse 17. You hear me? 17. Watch. Okay? I gave you three words before. I gave you... The word that I gave you before was uh, a role model, a believer, and a follower, right? Okay, now watch this. Dear brothers and sisters, pattern your lives after mine and learn from those who follow our example. In other words, what Paul is saying, follow me as I follow Christ. But I, I have another interpretation for that. If I stop following Christ, don't follow me. Okay, now, praise the Lord. That's Philippians 3.17. Go, go to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Hold on now. Philippians 4. 
I got it. Verse 9. Please. Remember I told you as an exercise? I told you you got to exercise, you got to practice. Remember I told you that, right? Right? Okay. So in verse 9 it says, keep putting into practice. Keep putting into practice. I'm, I'm reading a New Living Translation. You're reading the King James. But a similarity. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. Write that down if you're taking note. The God of peace. You, wanna, you, wanna have, you want Shalom Adonai to be happy with you. Praise the Lord. You want him to be very happy with you. Believe me, you do. You're working out what God has worked in. That's, this is what this teaching is about. Working out what you already have. In, so you got to discover what, what is good, what's good inside of me. Because all my life, people have been saying that I'm no good. So I've been believing the wrong people. Now all of a sudden, this word that you start reading and studying, right? Because you're a student of the word, right? You're learners, right? You're always going to be students, right? Learners, right? Okay. And you're always reading, right? That's why I call you leaders, because readers are leaders. Praise the Lord. Readers are leaders. Readers, leaders hear. Readers are smart to hear and slow to speak. Leaders are always observing. And then they have an interpretation of the matter. And when they discover really the interpretation of a matter, now they can apply this thing to the matter, to themselves. That's what I'm saying. See? So you are responsible for your growth. Every one of us is responsible for our growth. Praise the Lord. Nobody's going to be able to come and do this for you. You got to do this on your own. Okay, where am I? We read Philippians 4 9. Let's do, okay, let's do this. 1 Corinthians 4.16. 1 Corinthians. Yeah, let's do that. 1 Corinthians 4.16. We're almost there, family. We're almost there. You got a lot of meat tonight. A lot of meat. And that's how you train. It's like, you know, Isaiah, it's like going to the gym. You learn from those that have been doing it. And they'll tell you, don't hold it, th don't hold it this way. Hold it that way. Put your thumb in, and you're going to see how it's going to work it out. You know, don't, don't put your butt into it. Just let your arms, bring it down. And then breathe. You know, or it's like, you know, a person that's learning how to box. No, no. Jab, jab, jab. Now cross. And put your hip into it. Turn, you know. Person is doing martial arts. Up, down, out, in. Grab the hands. Push them away. It's repetition. Well, a proper a day will keep the devil away. Read that word. That word will keep you going. The days you don't read your word, guess what happened? You get hit with the kitchen sink. Because you wasn't in your word. That's why you got to be always exercising. Exercising is more than just, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> exercise has a lot. You know, you exercise every day, you just don't realize it. You exercise washing your teeth. You exercise eating. You exercise taking a shower. I pray to God you do. I pray to God you exercise taking a shower. Praise the Lord. Okay? Drinking water when you're thirsty. You exercise all day long. Paying your bills. Getting to work on time. You're always exercising. Where am I? 1 Corinthians 4.16 So I urge you to imitate me. There it is. Holy Spirit talking to you. He said, put on my word, man. Put it on. You want an overflow? Put this thing on. Come on, say it. 
Amen. 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 Say it, believe it, and then you'll be able to receive it. All right, here we go. I need to do one more. Let me do two more. Two more, please. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, please. And then go 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Wait a minute. 11, and then verse... Okay. Wait a minute. What's going on up in here? I'm going to have to change, change it. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2. No, verse 1. Verse 1. Please. He says, imitate me, comma, just as I also imitate Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, let's go to Mark 11. Uh, yeah, let's go there. Mark 11. Mark, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11. Okay. Verse 24. Okay, you know what? Let's do 23. 23 and 24. 23 first. I'll close up with this, okay? So that we can uh, walk away with the right mindset. Verse 23. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain... Be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart. See, everything is in the, your issue is in the heart. If your heart ain't right. And don't doubt in his heart, but believe, watch this, that those things he says, that those things he says will be done, have an expectancy. He will have whatever he says. How many says do you see here? I see one, two, praise the Lord, three, four. Do you see five? Or you see four? How many you see? How many says you see? Please, somebody help me. How many say? Four? Okay. So let's start it again. Let's say it again. I say to you, that's one. Whoever says to this mountain, that's two. Be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says, that's three, will be done. He will have whatever he says. Completely right. Four. Now how many times the verse says, say and it tells you to believe and not doubt. See, we've been, we've been believing, but we've been saying the wrong things. We've been believing in the wrong things we've been saying. Praise the Lord. Now verse 24. Therefore, I say to you, whatever thing you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. The word is in red. Jesus is the word and he's speaking. Let me see. Jesus is the son of the Lord. Jesus died on the cross for us. Jesus now sitting on the right and left us his word on, book, on paper. And you've been how long around here? You lie, he tells the truth. Amen. <laughs> okay. So if he tells me to believe, I'm going to believe. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, with that said, viewers, thank you so much. We'll continue teaching out of Philippians chapter 2. What a wonderful chapter. Praise the Lord. How uh, Paul just uh, encourages the Philippians and by telling them how they, conduct them, they should conduct themselves. And I believe the Holy Spirit is teaching us and, in, and expire, inspiring us to conduct ourselves a certain way. Remember, family... 
Jesus is Lord. God bless you. Amen. Let's give God a wonderful